Hi, I'm Pierce Jens with Baratza, and today we're going to walk through unboxing and setting up the 270WI. The 270WI is the 270W that's been further refined with well over two dozen improvements made to the mechanical, software, and electrical of the machine. By filtering out vibrations that come from heavy footsteps, door closures, or rowdy apartment mates, the 270WI is able to deliver the user with a more accurate and repeatable performance. Along with filtering out bad information, the 270WI is always learning from itself. It looks back at past grinds and adjusts for the future to make it even more accurate. All right, let's open up the box and set this grinder up. Upon opening the box, the first thing you're gonna run into is some paperwork. We have a quality assurance slip and we have the quick start guide. We'll go ahead and put this paperwork to the side and get to the exciting stuff right away. All right, let's take some parts out. I have the grounds bin, and in the grounds bin is a bristle brush. This is for cleaning the grinder, and you're not gonna need it for a bit, so go ahead and just put it in a safe spot. Wherever you put the paperwork would be a good idea. We'll go ahead and take the baggie off the bin, put it to the side, and get the hopper out. So on the top of the hopper is the lid, and it has a protective film on it, which we can go ahead, take off and discard. Inside the hopper, you'll find a shim kit, which is two hex keys, some washers, and a card leading you to some directions. You're not gonna need the shim kit for some time, but you will need this wrench to adjust the grinder to fit your portafilter. So I'm gonna put this to the side, but we're gonna be getting it out here in just another couple minutes. Next, we have this black mat. And then we have the hopper itself. There's a power cord laying next to the grinder. Go ahead and take the twisty tie off and take the prong cover off so your cord's ready to use. And now we're ready to pull the grinder out of the box. Rip. I'm going to go ahead and take the bag off the grinder and discard it and then take care to remove the silica packet from between the burrs and you want to throw this in the garbage. All right, we'll go ahead and put the hopper on top of the grinder. So the hopper, it has three legs on the bottom of it. And these three legs key into three holes on the top of the grinder. Once you get the legs to key into the holes, then you need to rotate the hopper clockwise to lock it into position. Rotating the hopper clockwise is a critical step and it's a required step to get the motor to turn on. And there's another step that's required as well and we'll get to that in just a minute. But let's go ahead and put our grounds mat in and then our grounds bin in, but my grounds bin doesn't fit. Well, right now the convertible arms are set up for accepting a portafilter. So I need to adjust them to the bin position and to do that, all I did was press in on the right fork arm and then rotate it to the right. The left one will adjust automatically and when you let go, the arm will spring forward and be locked into place. And now it's wide enough to accept the bin. And from here, I'm gonna plug the cord into the wall. And then I'm gonna plug the cord into the back of the grinder. And it's alive. Now it's time to get the WI set up to grind by weight into my portafilter. I'm going to go ahead and remove the bin and convert the arms back into portafilter mode. Remember, to do that you press in on just the right arm and then you can pivot it down, the left arm will follow. You want to make sure that the arms do lock into place when you convert them. Now that it's been converted to the portafilter mode, I'm going to see does my portafilter fit out of the box? And it's a close fit. I can get it in there, but it's not well supported, so I need to adjust my hook. Before I adjust my hook, I'm gonna play with the arm covers. You can rotate them, and they are thicker on one side than the other. Even rotating them to different positions, I'm not able to get it to fit nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate them so that they're flat and wide because they look nice to me like that. And then I'm going to adjust my hook. Now I need you to grab your shim kit that we didn't let get too far away from us because 
we need the smaller of the two hex wrenches that's in it. I'm gonna grab this two millimeter hex key and I'm gonna use it to slightly loosen this set screw in the hook cylinder. I only loosened it about a quarter of a turn, but by doing so, my hook is able to slide up and down. From here, I'm gonna take a bit of a guess as to what I think looks good. I'm gonna remove my porta filter, but I'm gonna to try to hold the hook in the same spot, and I'm gonna tighten up this screw. And now I need to check my work. What you're looking for is that the porta filter sits relatively level on the arm and that it's well supported by the hook. You don't want it to be a very tight fit so it holds the porta filter up and you don't want it to be a really loose fit because then it'll wiggle a little bit more. So a happy medium is what I have shown here. At this point we're ready to select a grind weight, a grind setting, and go for it. To fire up the motor, you have to have both your hopper engaged and your adjustment ring set to a setting less than 31. Why? Well, there's some safety switches. If you listen closely, you can hear a safety switch clicking when I lock my hopper in. Listen. And on the adjustment ring, when I move my black grind setting indicator to a setting less than 31, you can hear another switch engage. Listen. Both of these switches need to be engaged for your motor to turn on, so make sure you have your hopper locked clockwise and your black grind setting indicator on a setting less than 31. I'll go ahead and set it in the middle at about 18, and next I need to select a grind weight. There's three presets on the 270WI, and these presets are adjustable by using the up and down arrows. To permanently save a preset, simply hold one of the buttons until it flashes, just like a car stereo. Okay, once you have your grind setting selected, your hopper locked in, and a grind setting chosen, all you have to do is press play to turn it on. To turn the motor off, you need to either press the pause button or the stop button. Now that the 270WI is fully set up, it's ready to go into use. We have some recommended grind settings just to get you started, and that's going to be a setting of 9E for making espresso, or 20E if you're doing some coarser grinding for manual brewing. If you have some questions about the programming or software of the Sete 270WI, I recommend watching our separate video that details the programming in depth. Other than that, further questions are always welcome to support at Barazza.com or you can give us a ring.